Hello and welcome to Women Achievers. This is the program that chronicles the journey of the girl child to boss lady. And I have with me in the studio today a very special woman. She's an entrepreneur, she's a philanthropist, she's a mother, a wife, and she has helped so many women. So we want to know the story. We want to know why she does what she has done and why she has motivated so many women so that other women too can be inspired to do more for women because women are the bedrock of society. They're the first nucleus, the family unit. So when they nurture that nucleus, then the nation becomes a better place. Please welcome Chief Mrs. Raliat Abdusalam. You're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I mean, that introduction got me. <laughs> oh, well, that's powerful. Yes. Special. Yes. <laughs> We're still learning. Everything. Yes. So. so tell us more about your childhood growing up. Well, I come from a very big family. I mean, on my father's side, my mother's side, big, big extended families. Okay. Um, my father had 15 of us. Wow. My mother had seven of that 15. Big family, mm -hmm. everybody educated. Like I say, we're the second um, level of um, educated in the family. You know, yeah. they are stratas. Maybe yes. you're, you come from one literate. At least mm -hmm. we are the second stage literate yes. in the family. So there's a bit of um, exposure. And my siblings are doing very well, mostly married with kids. So what schools did you attend? Well, I started my life in Ilori, St. Joseph Nursery and Primary School okay. in Ilori. Then went to Federal Government Girls College of Weary. Then we went to ABU. Then finished up my master's in Oyo State. Wow, you went around Nigeria. <laughs> yes. Really, really. So what was your working experience? Did you go straight into business or you worked? I served in Abuja and I worked with the FCT Water Board. The marriage took me back to Lagos. So on getting to Lagos, we started an oil um, company in the downstream sector. Mostly we're doing distribution of um, diesel in layman's language. And then I went, because I, I'm very restless, so I do, I put my hands in a lot of things. Then we started a logistics company called First Up T Plus Logistics, wow. which I started running until today. I'm still doing so, so some of those services. And of course, on and on, I started taking my hobbies very seriously. Okay. I started a fashion house in Lagos called Curat Couture. And too many things. I'm, I'm into sports too. My little, my little boy is in university now. Okay. When he was three years old, you know, he likes watching Man United with the dad and all the all those English clubs. Mm -hmm. So my little boy said, I want to be captain of my own football team. Okay. That should be my birthday gift. And I said, okay, let's see how that goes. I thought it was a joke until I couldn't sleep. And then one day they schooled in Lekki. So we're driving home and then we saw a field that they just finished. And he said, Mommy, Mommy, see the field now, you promised me. And we started something like a friendship. I called my friends, I called his friends' moms, bring your kids together, let's start, let's get a coach and start playing with it. What we started as a joke um, 15, 14, 15 years ago, it's now a full fledged registered academy wow. and a big football club in Lekki Environs there. So it's running, whether I'm there or not, it's running on its own and what doing, a mother's doing love very can well. Do. What a son's love can do. <laughs> no, but you also took it upon yourself now. No, we started it as a joke and okay. then when people started making inquiries, we started, you know, I said, oh, why don't we just make this uh, football academy where we can train young ones? And then we divided it also to be an NGO because we're training a lot of boys on the streets for free. Oh, that's good. And helping, placing them, you know, in clubs, yeah. Nigerian clubs, getting yeah. scouts to come from, um, from the abroad okay. to check what they're doing and all that. So we went that far. So tell us more about your philanthropy. Um, for philanthropy... Because I come from that large family setup, so you find out that cousins, family friends, everybody comes in. My mom is, she's a, my father and my mom, they were both politicians. So my father was a politician before he died. My mom is still alive. She's still a very big politician in choir. So you can imagine the influx of people in and out of your house every day of your life. So I'm sure that is the basis of where philanthropy started from. Because okay. you see your parents always giving always accommodating. Kids are not theirs, they are training. Kids are not theirs, they are living with us. 
So that is the kind of upbringing I had. So it just comes to say that I just followed in their footsteps. So the DNA. Is in the DNA automatically because I married a husband that had a big family and as of the time I married him he was kind of in charge of all his siblings so my house was always like 20, 21 and people. And probably polygamous setting too. No, 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 I'm the only wife. No, he's so setting. Oh, he's on set. Very serious polygamy. So, so I can imagine with plenty of children, children. Uh, but, but there's love so I mean the friction is not much. So I found myself always accommodating, mm -hmm. tolerating, and giving, even when you don't have. So when all these passions came in, the kids started growing up. I just started to start my own foundation. I named it after myself, Ego, Tri Ego Tripping. I called it uh, the Rally at Anako Abdul Salam Foundation, RAF. Okay. And we've been able to do a lot. Okay. We've been able to do medical outreach, give our food stuff, especially um, starting from when um, COVID started. I've done so much in Lagos State, then lately I've been moving some of those to Kogi State, where I'm from. So of all the things that you have done in your life, which one is the closest to your heart? I think I'm not done yet. Okay. So, but so far? So far, everything, I have a passion for what I do. Everything I do, I do it passionately. I don't only learn about it, I study it. I, I put all my mind into doing things so that, because I hate to fail. Even when I fail, I learn from it and move on. I'm not somebody that give up. If I have a dream or have, mm. I decide I want to do something. That is why when I look at all my businesses, I feel fulfilled that, oh, this one is doing well. That one is doing... Even when the economy is bad, I don't run away. So I can't really say what I have... Um, not fashion. Not f I'm passionate about fashion because it's always been a part of me okay. to design, to draw. Unfortunately, I learned to make clothes myself, so in, I couldn't get to do that. But I can draw, design, mm -hmm. and I can have an I have an idea of what I want to create. You can't do it all. It's okay. No, you but that I had to go and go to sewing school, fashion house, wow. to so learn to cutting and the sewing. I found out I didn't have a passion for that at all. <laughs> So, but for every other thing, mm -hmm. I, I could describe, I could draw, I could, you know, put my ideas into what I want done. Yes. So I won't really say that um, I'm passionate about anything, but being a wife and a mother should be mm -hmm. my highest and most fulfilling passion till date. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you think should be the role of women in politics? Are we doing enough? Are we maximizing our potential as women? Hmm, that's a very loaded question because, to be fair, we are not. Okay. Um, we are naive and we are still scared. We are worried about how the world will see us. And the few women that have made it in politics, you, can, you, you know, you hear all this negative narration about their life. They slept their way through. They had to sleep with someone to get there. Not only in politics, in almost every organization. Mm -hmm. yes. You see that women to rise. To rise to it's as top. if she must have slept with the whole world or something. So that makes people draw back. A lot and of people shouldn't. have that ambition. They dream of maybe making their environment on Nigeria a bigger, bigger and better place. They have the ideas. They know what they want to do. They have the passion, but they don't want to come out. They are scared because of all this narration and everything. And, you know, a few of myself and my friends, we came up with um, an organization called Evolving Women in Politics. Okay. It's called EWIP. Um, they didn't allow us to register EWIP, so we registered Evolving Women in Progress and Community Development, my friends and my sisters. And that journey has really exposed me to the plight of women in Nigeria because we were not only about exposing women to politics and all that, we're also like an NGO where we empower them. In politics, women cannot match the men financially. That was the bane of the problem for women in politics. Even though the parties are now saying women should pay half the price for if you want to go for an elective office, mm -hmm. then the men are not really sincere about the percentage of women they want to rule. How come the political parties are not saying when the man is president, a woman must be vice? Or when the man is governor, a woman must be deputy? And financially, that's a problem. Number two is women don't support themselves. 
and we were always complaining the men are maligning us. Starting this women group has exposed me to a lot. So you saw a lot of that? A lot. I mean, we have to have a lot of patience with ourselves. So what we're doing, we're encouraging women, understand your right, your civic duty as a woman. You have the same right as the man to take positions, to fight for your right, for your voices to be heard. And if we come together, we'll make a bigger impact. So we've just been throwing our votes in the air as women. Yes, we have. We didn't leverage on it. Yes, we have. If I come out and say I want to be president in the APC now, how many votes, how many delegates will vote for me? You see, I don't have the financial capability to rally them to vote for me. The women themselves will not vote for me. So we need to change the mindset. Very important. We need to change the mindset. We need to learn that the higher population of voters are women and youth. Yes. And we are the mothers. We can control our youth to think like us. So if the narration starts to change from that level, more women will have that opportunity. Because the population that votes in Nigeria won't like to use women. So when it's time for elections, they call you, you come and dance and sing. Mm, and wear a shabby and carry rice. You wear the same Ankara. If you notice, it's mostly women that do that. It's true. And if you notice on election day, it's mostly women that line up. Some men do. I'm not saying men don't vote or mm -hmm. men don't line up. But you could see that the women are the rallying point for most political rallies in, 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 in Nigeria today. Yeah. So it's a process. Yeah. So we start the process educating ourselves, especially mm. in the grassroots. Not for you and I in Abuja and that are sitting that we're exposed, we're literate, we understand the dynamics. So what that my group has done is to go deep into the grassroots and start the conversation. Okay. And you can't do that with an empty pocket. True. You know? So when you go to the grassroots, you, you organize a medical outreach or you organize an empowerment program and then you start to tell the women but what have been saying. Do not agencies. Have you accessed them? Not yet. Okay. We are hoping because we just started IRIP um, last year. Oh, okay. The growth has been so tremendous. Oh, it caught us true. on our ways. Ah. That, that, that's to show you how women are becoming passionate. Yes, they're they are. waking up. We are, we are waking up because when we started it, we didn't think that we'll get this far. I mean, the kind of women, the magnitude, and the, the resourceful women, the powerful women that join just from hearing this is what you're about. They want to help, they want to be part of it. But financing is always a problem for women because you can hardly find a woman that will sacrifice their but money. Even financing, for me, I think what answers did by well, pulling resources through the internet, it can also be done for women. Yes. If you have a pool of resources, to sponsor women. NSAS was successful because, you know, there was a series of violent acts mm. against the youth that brought that it voice, triggered that triggered that voice. So it's something that had happened over time. Luckily in Nigeria, there's not so much violence against women. If there are, they are kept very quiet. Maybe sexual abuse, mm. sexual cultural, violence, needs, cultural violence. yes. Maybe if we had a series of that, you understand and then we have like our organization mm. starts to protest and they make it you know like a worldwide phenomenon hashtag something stop stop that or stop um, but it's been gathering momentum lately yes, because yeah. of the social media yes we're not being aware that a lot of girls are molested uh, and because some of these things like i said happen in places where there's no social media Yes, a few happen in the cities and town where it can be recorded, it can be talked about. But how many people complain in the villages when they marry off girls at 11, 12 years, which is normal? When the man talks, the woman has to keep quiet. When men beat their wife to submission. How many times is there social media in those places? Some, some places there's even no internet. So it's easy mm -hmm. doing a lot now to campaign for violence against gender. What we even started with, because um, when, we, when we started it, we, what we started with was the political recognition. Okay. How do they recognize you as a woman? I'm telling you, we are still struggling with that. What political about the constitution? What does the constitution say about the role of women? Well, for the UWIP constitution. No, the Nigerian, the Nigerian constitution. constitution. Of course, it's equal rights. There's no woman-man in Nigerian constitution. The constitution is, is not gender-based. 
<laughs> we're not recognized. <laughs> no, the constitution is not saying he, she. Okay. The constitution, Nigerian constitution is not gender based. Your rights as a man is the same as my right as a woman. But we can't bail out people. Women still can't bail out. Bail out women. Yeah. I think There's what the judicial. I think what is, yes, in some because of the traditional beliefs and maybe Sharia laws and some mm. of those laws that are contradicting themselves. But what we have is this: we are still very deep into our religion. We are still very deep into our traditional beliefs. And if you look deeply, even in history, some women were exceptional. True. Queen Amina of Zaria, Moremi, um, so those, many. Those ones broke protocol. Yeah. So why are we not teaching our children that it's not new? There are women that have broken protocol and been successful about mm -hmm. it. Uh, Fela's mom, Fumi Van Subkuti, it was strange the things that she was doing at that time, which has now been normalized. It takes a lot of guts and it takes a lot of support to, because we still need the men's support for our voices to be heard. We can't do it alone. After I discussed about women's rights and all, and I said, well, we still need our men. You understand? To support us. To support these ideologies because right now they are in the seat of government, the men. They've always been. Yes. And, if you, you, and, and you're a lone voice and it's like you're talking against them. Mm -hmm. So we need to appeal to the men. After all, they have mothers, so we appeal to them so that some of these things can be made easier for us. Okay. We're going to a short break. This is still Women Achievers, and we'll be right back. All right, so we were talking about, oh, we've talked about Erip enough. Yes. I want to go to your foundation. Um, Tell us more about the foundation. RAF. Okay. Uh, the shelter is RAF. Okay. Rally at Anako Abdul Salam Foundation. The foundation was based on my passion to give, my mm -hmm. passion to have a listening ear, and to profess solutions. And um, last year, I've always done things like that, but I've never formally put a name on it or mm -hmm. register it properly. So last year, because my kids were flying out of the house, it gave me enough time to do so many things I've always okay. wanted to do. So last year, I, I registered it, and I did my first um, inaugural um, activity okay. somewhere in, in Surulere. It's a rare good day to rare community. Was it a medical outreach? Medical, plus okay. food stuff, plus, you know. And I got support from basically friends and family. I didn't base it on money because okay. I found out that a lot of Nigerians don't like to give foundation f money, cash. Yes. Maybe they assume that um, those foundations spend the money. So I basically said, if you want to give money, that's fine. But I don't really want your money. I want you to package full stuff, package whatever you can for the elderly, for single mothers and for children and, and when I did that in that community what got me was one of the oldest women in the community actually came out to pray for me and then they gave me plantain um, bunches of plantain plantain is one of my best food so I was shocked they were showing gratitude because they said since they've lived in that community they've never seen this kind of thing because we took care about almost 500 people wow yes and I had um, one of my friends in the U.S. who also has a foundation just for feeding people. Okay. So she came with food for the kids. About um, Moren Jiang. Her name is Moren Ike. So her foundation is Moren Jiang or something oh. like that. And I had support. I had my doctor friends come to check eye ENT team there to check blood pressure, sugar, BMI. And then we had an arrangement with some of the hospitals there. So where there are serious referrers, mm. we refer them. But if it's something that all, all on the counter drugs can take care of, we also, we also did that. So, and then I had packed foods in my rough name, okay. you know, rice, spaghetti, that I, that the foundation personally oh. did. Oh, okay. But of course, by the end of the day, there's a tent where we packed those packed foods were for each family. Mm -hmm. We started with just single mothers and the elderly. But you know how those things can be. It became very rough. I had to call the army people to come. Because the men said they too need the food. Oh. And they, they had families. 
they are single fathers. And too. they are single fathers. <laughs> So they wanted to start struggling. So we now got the army there to oh, yeah. put them on a straight line mm. and then we started sharing the food. And then when you witness such things in a country like this, then you realize you are really privileged. Because when you see people struggling for those kind of things and it became a big fight, you realize you are really privileged. It, to give at that time, it, it opened my eyes. What are our politicians really doing? I know that it's tough on them to because if you're going to do politics in this country, you will have to spend and borrow to satisfy people. People expect financial, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. But Nigeria doesn't have a baseline for poverty. We don't. Oh. We don't take care of the needy at all. So when you Especially go... the elderly that you went to. Oh, I had to do that because most of them... And mm -hmm. they did interviews and some of those old women said all their life they've never had they a checkup. They've never had a checkup. They've never had to go somewhere. They take their blood for blood, blood sugar and all that. So it was a very fulfilling one, our inaugural one. And this year we also have a lot planned. Okay. But we're going to move it out of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. Most probably go to my home state, Kogi State, <laughs> to do that. Because my, my, my mom was fighting me that those things I went to do in Lagos State, because I, it was all about the news. I did a lot of news coverage. And said, I should have brought it to Kogi or Kwara. She's from Kwara. My father is from Kogi. So I said, okay, we'll start from my father's side okay. and then we'll go to her side and do. Then another foundation reached out. They want to do boreholes for communities without water. And because they saw what I was doing with both EWIP, because EWIP to do those empowerment. empowerment and what I did for my foundation. So they wanted to partner with us to provide funding for wow. communities that didn't have water. So if all of us do a bit yes. and um, and show, a lot of people are ready to support. Yeah. All right, on a final note, what's your advice to the girl child? Well, the sky... Is struggling, that is discouraged, or has been held down by cultural, cultural bondage or academic? There's always a light. I won't even say at the end of the tunnel. When you look at your life as a girl, there's always a soft, a soft, you know, there's always a light where you can use to get to where you're going to. When you are surrounded with impossibilities, just be positive in your mind that it is just a phase and it will pass and God will realize you. Mm -hmm. And then look in your community for people that have like minds like you, women, yeah. if you're a girl child. Look around you. There's always a woman that they, if you're in the village that they don't like because of ideology mm -hmm. of independence. Yes. Tailor yourself. Engage yourself with them. They will help you. The girl child. All right. For leadership of men and power, what advice would you or what would you ask of them to do for women? Ah, our men, I beg you. They have to help us. And they have to realize that since, for example, I'll take Nigeria as a case study. Okay. Since the history of Nigeria, men have been ruling. Where are we? Give a woman a chance. Mm. In the history of this country, the few women, examples everywhere, the few women that have been given opportunities, they've done a lot. True. A lot. Even in the corporate world. Even in the corporate world. Oh, banks now have like five chairmen that are women. And those banks have not failed, have they? No. It was the men that even run some of them down. So let's let's let the men help us, so that we can also. Put, we are the next. We are the bedrock. You said it. Yes. And then when our children look at our achievements, it propels them more towards greatness. So I think the men don't have a choice. Thank you very much, Chief Mrs. Rayat Abdusalam, for talking to the girl child and imploring the men to include more of women in governance. That's how it's been on Women Achievers. We've been talking what women can achieve and what is possible. And we've seen it with Chief Mrs. Riley Abdul Salam. She has achieved as an entrepreneur, a fashion entrepreneur, a football academy is also in the mix. Wow. <laughs> a foundation and EWIP. She's done so much for women. We appreciate you and we hope that you do more. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you for watching. God bless Nigeria and God bless women in Nigeria. Mm -hmm.